That's right. That's right. It's time for more Tower of God, quote unquote, slander. It's actually funny to see people come into my Tower of God reactions and say, You hate this show! You're just chasing it for the views! What views, bro? There's, there's no views in Tower of God. Everyone's already left. If you've watched my season one reaction, you have also would know that I'm one of the most compassionate, most motivated people to cover Tower of God content because how rich the world building was. But season two has just been a disappointment. And I'm going to call it a disappointment. I'm not going to just say that this is fine because then that's such a precedence for these studios to just forced down even more dog shit down our throats. This is called the Tower of God Season 2 Rant. Let's check it out. This is going to be a little bit different than my normal sort of yeah. heavily edited type of videos. More chill, laid back, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to the second channel, of course. But um, I just wanted to sort of speak about Tower of God a bit. All right. Some bad Call of Duty gameplay, which may or may not be mine. And his mouse and keyboard. That's the only reason why I like this base boost is that's crazy. Not, that's not what we're here for. Um, I just wanted to rant a little bit about Tower of God because I'm sick. I'm sick, and I'm not even COVID nineteen. Come on, rants, bro. Like COVID twenty two. At this point, this is how sick I am of this show, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Let me let me reverse. I'm not gonna try and come into here, come into this with such a negative attitude. But I feel that negativity pulling on my heart right now, and I feel like that's. What <laughs> That's where we're going. So I guess in regards to Tower of God, I made the video the other day, a couple weeks ago, and we should be watching that video. I made that video. I was still complaining a bit, you know, but I was really trying to keep a positive outlook on this show, um, and I was gonna let it ride out for a couple weeks, and then once it, the season was closer to finishing, or when I got some extra free time, I was. Just it's almost finished now. And then possibly make a second video. And possibly a third video since I think it was like 24 episodes that they said were coming out for season two. That's right. We're going to get a second core. So we're working towards the workshop stuff. And as soon as this core one is done, then the workshop battles there. And then people are hyping up workshop to be the savior of Tower of God and, and saying stuff like, oh, all the existing content right now, right? Leading up to the workshop, it's one of the most weakest points of Tower of God. And then there's other people glazing. That it's the best arc ever. I think that the current material they're adapting is so wonky. Most likely due to the source material plus the direction that the adaptation is going through. Where every episode feels jagged. There is no continuity. Every time we're just time skip in a different floor doing a random test for whatever bullshit reason. And it's everything is just so scattered. I just want to focus on one fucking plot line with one core group that I'm familiar with. Rather than being tossed around through three separate POVs and not being able to fucking resonate or even care about these characters that are new. Um, I don't think that's happening anymore. Because... With my longer style type of videos, it's not that I don't like making them for shows that I don't necessarily deem good. Like, if there's a bad show, I'll happily, like, I did one for Video of Healer and, like, Anukai San's dog and shit, you know, like, those are enjoyable. Amazing animes. I didn't see myself enjoying making a Tower of God video, like, trying to, like, joke about it and stuff like that, just because it was a show that I really feel like had potential to do big things. Absolutely. Season 1. And the webtoon itself, right? People call this the one piece of webtoons. What an amazing ride Season 1 was. Even if people complained about the pacing as an anime only, covering that shit was so fun. The big reveal with Rachel, the push, oh my god. Like, the emotions that I felt, man. And now, it's just mid. Mid, 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 mid. And if you think that Season 2 adaptation right now is actually decent, like, you are so beyond delusional. You can't even call yourself a Tower of God fan. You're actively harming the fucking brand by allowing such mediocre bullshit to be passed through. You should demand better for yourself. If you're fine with being served dog shit, you will be given dog shit. Stop fucking glazing and licking the, co the corporation boots and deep throwing them and protecting them. Why are you going out of your way to protect these studios that are giving half-assed efforts to your show? Do you truly love your show? I don't think you do. I think the people complaining truly loves the show. Because they are coming from a passionate place of passion. But a lot of children don't even understand that. And they think that they need to protect their favorite show no matter what cost. Even if it's a shitty adaptation. Which is so counterproductive. When it came to the um, anime space. And I guess I'm going to use this video too to ask a couple questions to people who maybe. Who might be a bit more knowledgeable on this topic. Because I'm going to be honest with you. Like I don't know why the fuck they brought this show back. <laughs> like I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep it real. Like I don't like looking at it. I got to episode. The weird shit about this season of content is that individual frames look good, but the moment it starts moving, it looks really fucking bad. So whatever episode I got to in that video that I made, 
which is on the channel, so if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, but whatever episode I got to, that's the last episode I watched. But I was scrolling on Twitter, and I was in the grocery store, I think. I think I was in the grocery store when I saw this, and I saw Bam fighting a fire nigga. Quatro, yep, that fight literally looked like a VTuber rigged model of Veol just moving, swaying back and forth, left and right. And dare I say this is worse treatment than seven deadly frames. He got slashed by- Damn. Like, I, I'm really trying to like, let me just pull it up on my phone as I'm talking because it really like grossed me out. Like I fell to my knees and I have bad knees, you know, so for me to even take that risk and let my legs give out like that, what I'm looking at must be horrendous for me to sacrifice my man my on his knees on the cold hard pavement like that. Yeah, I see. I see Bam get sliced mm -hmm. by some red haired nigga. And then like this is what I'm talking about. It looks like a VTuber model moving left and right right now. He has fireballs just spawning in out of all these fireballs are spawning in from the fucking dark ether. And I don't even and like. Again, each individual frame doesn't look bad, right? This is not bad art, but the overall direction is just so fucking trash when it comes together. Dark ether, and I don't even know where they're coming at, and he's spinning in slow motion, and this, and that's quite so possible. wonky. The things I could have seen that day, but it wasn't over yet because they were fighting some six-armed freak, and I just I saw this other clip of this mole rat cheering behind him. He's just moving Duck trio. His arms in the same ass pattern over and over again. No, he actually moved them in the same pattern and then they reversed him and then they just put him back. Min maxing animation, bro. Oh my gosh, I'm about to throw up. They reverse him and then they just. They looping it. it. They looping it. To the same like arm movements that he was doing. And looking at those two clips, I already knew that my time with season two was up. I didn't even need to go revisit it. And it was taken out of my Crunchyroll queue. So that's how you know me and that me and that show's relation. Brother, why are you still on Crunchyroll, man? Ship is over. And I saw people on my video talking about like how the show is good. Like just It's not good. It's objectively mid. Just give it time, let it cook, let it brew. And like I never once doubted that the story was like good. That is why I wanted this shit to succeed. Yeah, the story is amazing. It's the adaptation that's the problem here. Indeed. And that is why, like, I don't even want to be making this rant type of video, but, like, I feel like this has to be changed, I guess, to some degree when it comes to anime. Because, again, I know the industry is a lot different in Japan than it is over here when it comes to anime. And I know it's getting a bit more popular and, like, mainstream companies are hopping on this shit. But, like, I know, I don't know all of the, I don't know the business side of things over there. But judging from where I'm sitting, I really do not understand why one penny was put into this show if it came out looking like this. Because if I recall... Yeah, wouldn't you want to just captivate, like, a bigger audience with such a huge IP and make sure you deliver a good product? Why did you let this random studio take this for such a coveted show? Why? None of that fucking makes sense to me. Call correctly, it was a fairly popular show when it was airing back in, what was it, 2019, 2020, something like that. It was always on the front page of Crunchyroll. I remember, I think, a Crunchyroll exclusive studio picked it up, and I know they switched studios. Um, but even with them switching studios, I really don't know why they put people on payroll for the show. I don't, because, I mean, I know I'm probably not the only nigga to drop the show because of this. Part of me does want to drop this show, and honestly, most of my audience has dropped Tower of God. It is a stark contrast to the people that was watching Tower of God Season 1 compared to Season 2. In the beginning, it kind of... First impression matters. And the first couple episodes of Season 2 was pretty decent. Definitely better than now. Got my hopes up, but people have seen what the truth is. The mask is off. The cat's out of the bag. People are gone. Like, there's just no way. Like, I don't see how they put out that product and anticipate that the show is going to succeed in any way like it did season one. Because everything, everything about it is changed now. Like, as I expressed in that video, and it wasn't even at its worst yet, I expressed that this show lost all of its character and all of its flair, like its draw. Its draw was lit. Like, I remember looking at the thumbnail before I was even suggested the show by one of my friends back. Yeah, the art style was very different, bold, right? Trying to mimic some sort of webtoon feel to it. And well, that alone being gone isn't the problem, but there was a level of polish that people really enjoyed. But 
it just doesn't the magic of season one just does not exist the soundtrack is there kevin penkin is honestly just hard carrying tower of god right now with the soundtrack but even with the soundtrack hard carrying the lack of animation you can tell that the people working on this have no passion or love put into it it's just fucking moving webtoon frames that's it they're not animating this shit Every frame looks good, but the way that they're connected is so poor, mismanaged. Back when I watched season one, I remember looking at the thumbnail and it had that draw to it and that appeal. And I was already gravitating towards the show because the shit looked different. The colors looked a bit more vibrant, saturated. That art style and the mm -hmm. line work on the characters, like there was just a, a di completely different atmosphere to the show, which seemed a little bit like odd, but it was appealing. And the more you watch the show, the more you appreciate it because, like, it was separating that show it, into its own, like, category by itself. And there was just something about it that gave it, like, this... It, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I know what he's saying. It's this magic that you feel watching Tower of God Season 1, the different art style, right? And I don't think the storytelling is that unique, but there is something captivating the mystery surrounding Tower of God highlighted with their distinctive art style and the story that was so deep and rich and the fight scenes also definitely helped you know being pretty but all that magic is lost in translation with this new studio they have no vision they have no understanding of what people watch tower god season one for and now again it's just a mid fucking project and don't tell me that this is going to be saved in workshop arc i don't think it will and even if it does people have already dropped it they're not going to watch it bro that's what happens in anime just because like season three, season four content is good doesn't mean like people are going to come back just because season two was bad. Like, like, think about it, like Shield Hero. Are people watching season three shit because of season? Not really, right? Like, like, doesn't matter how good the future content is. You've already lost the momentum and the hype of the anime only audience. Like it was, it was not eerie, but it was like a serious tone. And for me, it made me take the story more seriously. Yep. The way it was done in season one. I really don't know how to explain it. And if someone could put it in the better terms for me in the comments, like if they get what I'm saying. It was a but beautiful like, moment. Season two. It really just looks like every, if you go on my anime list and you go to spring, summer, winter, fall, whatever, and you go to like the middle of the page where the not so popular shows are, looks like any one of those shits. Like nothing unique about it. Nothing different. Like... And like maybe back when I was like 14, 15, I would have enjoyed this, right? And I'm not gonna sit here and act like we haven't been spoiled in recent times with some of these heavy hitting shows like Jujutsu Kaisen and the shit One Piece has been doing with its animation and the cinematography and some shows like Vinland. Like I know MAPPA has been putting in some ridiculous Slave work. work into some of these shows and not just yep. MAPPA, but I was just, I feel like MAPPA has been coming out with a lot of shows that have been artistically like doing different things, I guess. Like, I know we've been spoiled a bit, but I don't think that means we shouldn't try on our product. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I'm, I know people sat down and worked on this show, but just looking at this show, it just doesn't seem like there was effort. I'm sorry. Passion and love poured into it. I can't feel a single thing. I feel no love put into this shit. And that's directly shown by the product itself. Just go look at the studio, official studio's Twitter account. Just look at any time they try to promote their product. Everyone in the replies are like, I can't believe you've done this to my favorite show. You should be shamed for what you've done to Tower of God. Shame on you. Because if you look at, see if you look at even episode one of season two, like... Episode one was decent. The first couple episodes, they got me. Because everyone's hyped up about who this new character could be. It's obviously Bum, right? Veal Jew Grace, Bug Slayer Techniques. You know, the fight scenes were definitely better than what we're seeing now. They baited us in the first ep couple episodes to make sure that, you know, the first impression kind of counts. And even then, it wasn't like a 10 out of 10. It was just like a 7.5. It was like doing enough. But now it's just like, yeah, nah, man, we got catfished. Yes, it was a downgrade, but it still looks like there was effort put into it. Exactly. But Bam was boxing with the little Poryang. winged guy and whatever. Like, there was movement in like the whole scene where he was like standing there and the electricity was. Yeah. Like, like was this shit was sick. The first episode, bro. It was like, damn, okay. It's looking like we're cooking for season two. Nah, baited. It was genuinely a beautiful scene. But like the shit that we're getting now with fireballs spawning out of thin air and then the six arm nigga looking like that one enemy from Elden Ring, the wooden guy or whatever. Like, I just don't understand why animated shows are put out and like not finished to like what they can be. Because if corporate greed, but corporate greed would state that they're trying to milk as much money as possible. Don't you think that you could make more money by covering a greater product? 
I guess it's the vision that's wrong. Because I think that if they really poured love into the show for season two content, and it would be well received by the audience, it would make way more money compared to the min-max they're trying to do with this studio and trying to ship out a mediocre product and hoping that it's going to satisfy some minimum bottom line and hoping that the name Tower of God IP will simply carry this mediocre product. Maybe that's the vision that they were betting on and they were just wrong about it. Every, even if every episode was done like episode one, from season two i wouldn't be sitting here complaining but it is clear that there has been like a drop off each and every episode like it seems like it's been getting worse and i the original studios doing blue box next season well thank god i'm not gonna check out that garbage I haven't even had to see the last fucking four or five episodes that have come out to even to know this now granted as i just said i watched up to episode five so maybe those are just two or three nah brother i've watched up to the most recent episode we're like episode 10 11 or some shit it does not get any better. It's just getting more sad. These stinky scenes that I saw on Twitter and I didn't do more research and the show looks immaculate. But I'm sure if there was an internet breaking type of scene or, or a ridiculous scene, I would... Maybe the people animating it hated the webtoon? For sure, bro. These employed people whose salaries, whose livelihood depends on how competent they are at serving the products. And if the product does well, then their lives also does well. They intentionally botched it, for sure. At the risk of their own livelihood, over a grudge over this show. No, come on, man. Of course that's not the case. Are you crazy? You think that people fucking would risk their entire lives over a grudge over one fucking series like that? An entire studio? Nah, man. I think this is a simple fucking skill issue. Corporate greed getting in the way and a, and a wrong vision. Just handed down to the studio that has no business adapting this content would have seen it just as quick as I as I saw the bad ones and it's like I get shows like falling off in terms of like their quality as the season progresses for specific reasons if we take Blue Lock for example Blue Lock episode one of Blue Lock the way Bachido was moving in that fucking cube that they were in doing his back are you guys sensing a pattern of behavior kind of feels like there's Pattern of behavior of the first episode always looking good. Zom 100 too, right? A fucking amazing just Sakuga moments going on. Because first impressions is all that matters to them. It feels like they're just trying to catfish us by showing an amazing first episode, a couple of first intro episodes to get us captivated, and then service mediocre products with some sort of hope that they've given us since, hey, they've shown us what they can do with episode one, right? Maybe they're going to do that... No, later on, maybe this is something that they're definitely implementing. That shit was fluid as fuck. But then we see episode 18, and we get an overhead view, and it looks like <laughs> CGI. <FIFA> 06, and <laughs> it's everyone's CGI. And it's like, with that show specifically, one, even with those CGI scenes in the other scenes, you could still see the effort is being made with the resources that they had at the time. Yeah. I'm not going into Blue Lock season two expecting that shit to look anything like the end of season one. Blue Lock Season 2. I don't know exactly how good the leaks are. I remember from 112, but if anything, if the leaks are warning us for, we should, we should not hope for anything for Blue Lock Season 2. I'll be there to watch it, but just keep that in the back of your mind as we go into October. I'm expecting it, especially since it's like only 13 episodes, to look like the first half of Season 1 for the most part because of how popular the show has become. Because no one expected Blue Lock to have the impact that it did when mm. it came out season one. That is probably why the quality started to fall off because they weren't even given enough resources Budget. and time to like produce something even better because no one expected that shit to pop off the way it did. Yeah, the timing of Blue Lock, I think the World Cups were happening too and Japan was popping off too, right? And there was a lot of memes about Blue Lock in Japan. It's like, oh my God, it's real life shit. But then it became the number one seller in the world, I think, manga-wise. Damn. And then it just got bigger and bigger. You know, so I'm sure they are going to want that shit to look even better than season one coming into season two. Yeah, you would think so, but how many times have we had an amazing season one and season two just fucking drops the ball, right? It's just like, it's, this is a repeating behavior. Like, there's, is there a season two that was better in season one? Can you guys think of a single fucking anime? <laughs> if I say name five, you probably can't. Is there an example where season two was just objectively better in season one? It's usually the other way around, right? Season one is a passion project. It baits the people into buying the source material and stuff like that. People anticipate a season two, then it's just like, oh my fucking god. Jujutsu Kaisen? Mmm, maybe. Oshinoko? The quality is definitely high for Oshinoko, I can tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, Ari Furata. Was season two better in season one? It's been a while since I've watched it. But, the pattern of behavior, at least of all the anime sequels that I've been catching up to, 
with the exception of these enemies that's been mentioned. It does feel like season one is always debate, then season two is just a lackluster product, and then people get mad, and then it just falls into obscurity. But that was just like an example as to why I understand the dip in quality. For this show, I do not understand at all, because Blue Lock season one came out what? Last year? We're mm. in October now? So it came out, my fault, it came out October of 2022, I think. Two years ago. So it's been two years. Tower of God has had four years to make a return. And it's like, maybe if they were like, if it was already in production, and then the other company that initially animated it dropped out, and then they had to restart or something, and maybe that is why it looks this way. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't give a fuck about scheduling. I don't give a fuck about different things happening behind the scenes that's caught, you know, that caused people to not have these budget or stuff. Drop it. Maybe that's unfair. Maybe that's impossible for me to say, but a studio animating this shit with limited resources and a schedule that's not accommodating of what the IP deserves, the studio should just drop it. And it's easy for me to say because I just want the good content. And those studios are just looking after their own bottom line. But goddamn, I'd much prefer just waiting than... I, I'd wait fucking five more years if that meant Season Tower of God Season 2 would be just in a different level of quality. And I get it, right? These studios are limited with things that they have been given, right? Different producers from the top up, the actual decision makers, they give the budget. But that doesn't mean that you should fucking shield this entire industry and say it's just the way it is. It's just like, if you want better fucking shit, I feel like... <laughs> They, like, these dudes need to just stop picking on projects that they cannot even fucking deliver on. Like, the scheduling for these episodes, I don't know how it works, because I remember with Jujutsu, they were animating that shit, like, weekly. With Tower of God, I just feel like it's been a waste of, like, resources and energy. And now, granted, maybe they're pulling some shit first 12 episodes of Shaky. The last yeah, and then the workshop arc, it's gonna be amazing. I have no faith at this current rate, because it's not the fact that the... I don't know, it's... Do you think they are doing it? It's... A, only one way to find out. But even if that's the case, people are not going to watch it. Like, it doesn't, like... But the, the, the worst fucking strategy, in my opinion, is they, it's, it's spreading out the budget so that you fucking min-max, just min all the fucking boring shit, the leading up to the good shit, then just bank on the hope that people are going to show for the good shit. Like, no, people have already dropped it and they won't watch. That's how fast, that's how limited people's attention span are. What, what are you going to do? Just expect them to fucking watch just the future content after just ex giving them mid-content? Like, most people are going to be like trash, drop, they move on to something else. Last 12 are immaculate because something crazy goes on in the um, show and it's a lot of fighting. So Workshop, it should be, right? Into that and that's look good. I don't know. because I'm And I'm saying last 12 episodes because I thought they said 24 at first. I don't know. But I'm just going off of what I've seen now. And no, they are going to do core 2, and I'm not going to drop Tower of God. I want to see how it pans out. I do love the story, but it just hurts me every week seeing such a mid-adaptation, and it'll be very interesting to see if people will actually turn out for workshop battle stuff. And it's like, I feel like I've been very patient with it the last couple weeks, but it just seems like it's getting worse. Yes, sir. You know, and I just wanted to make a little rant video about it. Um, rant? Keep I'm ranting, King. Take a week. I want to rant, to too. Video on this when I could be making other videos that I'm like actually enjoying having fun with because I just know I wouldn't have fun with a heavily edited like Tower of God. Yeah, fuck that garbage. At, at where it stands because it's just it's just disappointing. Yeah, you know, I guess I guess I'm very passionate about this show. And remember, a lot of stupid children, they cannot even think beyond the next five seconds of what they're thinking. Assume that these are haters. Like criticism is just hate. No, dumbass. We love this show more than you, and we're making big grown-up decisions to say, hey, maybe what you love should get a better adaptation. Oh, fuck me for saying that. Oh, suddenly I'm the biggest Tower God hater? No, you are a weak-minded loser that'll side with the corporation and protect this mediocre work and promote this culture of mediocre adaptations. For what? Just because you don't want to hear other people say, fuck this show? Listen, guess what? People have already dropped this show. You think other people making these kind of videos are going to prevent people from watching Tower of God? No, brother. They've already dropped this show. Like, this comes from a place of passion because we love Tower of God, because we know the potential that it has. We've seen it in season one. And to see this is just a tragedy. Specifically, just because it's one that I've been really waiting on. And... 
I guess this is the first time when it comes to anime where I've been waiting for a show like very patiently and I was arguing for it to be like a top 10 for me you know like that's like how high I was how I got damn like, oh, this has like top 10 top 5 potential from what I've seen in like the concept and like just seeing it flop this bad I guess the, I guess the it hurts best next thing you could compare it to is like Promise Neverland same thing Ooh. with that show I just don't know why like I just I just don't get it I really don't. I have the same feeling with Irregular at Magic High School Season 3 specifically, I have the feeling with Rising of the Shield Hero, Season 2 specifically, right? There's a lot of these animes where the second season just baits us after having such a lasting impression of Season 1, and it's just dead. One Punch Man Season 2, I hear that was also garbage, right? Season 1 was a passion project, and then Season 2 is just like, what the hell is happening? I don't get it, and again... I would appreciate like some sort of history lesson in the comments if anyone knows as to why like not even just with this show with like shows like Promise Neverland or even like Seven Deadly too. Like I feel like Promise Neverland and Seven Deadly were both very very popular shows. At the end of the day, I do not give a fuck about any excuses to justify the studios and the producers and their lack of budget and scheduling. That is their fault. We as the consumer simply want good content. I'm not going to take bullshit excuses of, oh, they had little time to work on this. Why did they have little time to work on it? Who created the scheduling? Clearly, there is a lack of project management going on behind the scenes. Don't fucking then expect the consumers to side with you and say, oh, it's, it's okay. We'll coddle you. No, fuck off. I don't care about any of those bullshit excuses. They can all stem from the poor management from the actual decision makers. I will never take lack of budget, lack of resources, lack of whatever. Nah, 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 nah. You're hiding behind this weak argument. If you think about who created those restraints, who created these problems, it's at the fucking top of the decision-making tree. Those dudes with corporate greed are causing this restraint to happen, and then we're supposed to just take it? No, fuck you. So then why go the direction with the story and the animation in the way that they did? Like, is animation just not that big of a... Obviously, like, anime is a big industry over there but is animation not as important as I'm, as I'm making it out to be no it is like over there in Japan or just in general it like, is I just like looking too deep into it like I really don't know for me personally it just like kind of ruins the experience when it like seems like there isn't any care into it you know like it just it really does take away from that anime yep. experience because I feel like you can tell when you're watching something how much people care about the show I've uploaded how many fucking anime videos, bro? Over like 2,000. We're reaching like 3,000. Over the last three years, how much anime have I watched? And I can tell when the studio actually gives a fuck. And it is such a refreshing feeling. And that's happened a lot of times by watching animes from Ufotable, A1 Pictures, Dokakobo, Cloverworks too, I guess. There's a lot of good studios. You can tell that they actually care. And it is a refreshing experience to watch something that's created from passion from love for the work rather than simply just pocketing their wallets with min-maxed fucking budgets. Like 50% of the anime experience is like what you are watching and how the story is told in a yep. unique way. And people can tell when they care. Visuals and like seeing like animators experiment with like different animation styles and art styles. Like that's why like One Piece, for example, like what they were doing with Wano the whole time, was like such an experience because you could you could just tell niggas were having fun with it and now granted one piece is a wacky ass show but like the impact frames and every or even with jujutsu kaisen and like the extended maharaga cut like it just looked like niggas were having fun with it i don't know but um i just wanted to i guess any sort of work any sort of art people can tell if it's a labor of love or if it's simply just another fucking job that they're showing up to man my thoughts on that and rant a little bit about it and i apologize for the bad gameplay um i can't say i'm the best <laughs> at first person shooters um my the gameplay was kind of nice to distract my adhd brain like subway surfers just to see something moving on the screen hand was actually hurting in this gameplay so maybe that's why it's so bad i'd usually drop like a little 60 ball type shit okay. but all yeah, right I enjoyed this rant type of video i did I edited just gameplay in the background i did in my opinion on something um Here's the video, guys. And Go check out the video. Here's his channel. If you haven't checked it out, the channel, there's a link. I'll happily make more videos.
videos like this just because they're obviously easier to put out but that's i don't fucking know what i'm saying i'm yapping a little bit but sub to this channel road 100k bet i mean go check out his channel guys i think he has very valid points about tower of god which is basically we've been just harping the same shit the entire time right tower of god season two is a lackluster adaptation very mid they baited us in a couple first episodes and now we're seeing just fucking frames just kind of look moving like powerpoint presentations the frames individually look decent but when it starts to move it's such a poor experience combine that with the lackluster source material of everything jumping around in the direction of the studio just adapting this material which just makes it so hard to follow everything is so incoherent and then you have shitty fight scenes on top of that of course people are gonna fucking drop it now we'll have to see how the workshop battle arc is gonna be but even if it's good you're already missing the point People have already lost interest. They're not going to just watch the mid shit just to get to the good shit. They're going to move on to something else. That's the brutal nature of content.